So this is step one. This is our intermediate. But now let's draw the final product after the second oxidation. So this was the first oxidation, and now we're going to have the second oxidation. Uh, let's see here. So um, how many bonds to oxygen did we start with? One. So after the first oxidation, the carbon had two bonds to oxygen. So after this next oxidation, it's going to have to have three. Uh, and you might not be able to figure out out of your head where, uh, how this would look. It turns out that what happens is we replace the H with an OH. It turns out that what happens is we replace the H with an OH. We replace the uh, aldehyde hydrogen with a hydroxy group. You get that from the water? Uh, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. We get that from the water. That's why I said a couple seconds ago the real problem here is the water. Mm -hmm. The real problem is not the chromium. Uh, the real problem is the water because that's where the OH is coming from. Um, Okay, yeah, that's why we want to avoid using water if we want to avoid the second oxidation. Okay, so uh, that would give us uh, this over here, and now we're done. All right, and again, you don't need to know the mechanism for this. So if this was a predict the products problem, you don't even, uh, to get full credit, all you have to draw is this. Um, you might want to draw this just as a thinking step, but this is the final product. This is the answer over here. So we would, we would not get the problem right if we just drew this. We have to go on to this. Um, Let's uh, go through again. What type of functional group is this? Good. Uh, what type of functional group is this? The ketone. Oh, the aldehyde. Because it's got a hydrogen. Yeah. And what type of functional group is this? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, did we talk about those last time? Carboxylic acids? Okay. Yeah, we talked about that, but pretty briefly okay. last time. Carboxylic acid. We talked about how this hydrogen here is the acidic hydrogen. I don't know. We didn't talk about this too much. But anyway, this is another term that you should know. Uh, carboxylic acid. This is what we get uh, if we oxidize an alcohol twice. If you oxidize an alcohol once, you get an aldehyde. But if you oxidize it twice, you get uh, the carboxylic acid uh, over here. OK, good. Um, Whereas if we use PCC in this uh, solvent, we would get this, which is the aldehyde. So you need to know the difference between these two uh, types of uh, reactions. So comparing these notes, they had the same exact starting material. Um, we both used oxidizing agents. And the first step was the same for both of them. The first step gave the same aldehyde. The only difference is that down here, the first step was the only step. And we only did one oxidation, whereas down here, we also did a second oxidation. Um, and that put in the OH group that came from the water. Why couldn't we put in an OH group over here? Because we didn't use water. Um, so the only, remember, the big advantage of PCC is just that it will dissolve in this solvent. You can't use this reagent here because it doesn't dissolve in this solvent. So it only dissolves in water. With the chromium, you have to have water. That's why over oxidize it because it takes the OH. With this chromium reagent, you have to have water. That's right. And then it over oxidizes because the water is present. With this chromium reagent, uh, you don't need to use water. This can dissolve here. Remember, they're both chromium reagents. This is by the way called dichromate, if you need to have a name for it. I don't think you need to know that name. You can see why it's called dichromate because there's two chromiums here in the formula, potassium dichromate. All right, so with this... Uh, you have sodium dichromate too, right? Uh, I suppose so. Usually it's conventional. I think draw the potassium, but they're, they're both alkali metals, so this should both be fine. Or maybe they drew it that way too, somewhere? Oh, it was actually in the homework, right? That's what we were saying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah. This is just the counter ion anyway. So, yeah, yeah it could be, that's right. So it could be sodium dichromate or potassium dichromate. So, can generally, if I'm writing a solvent or a reactant or whatever, can I put Na or K? Yeah. Most of the time. That's right. We've seen many examples of that. For example, if you want to do an SN2 reaction, you might use chloride. Well, there has to be some counter ion to that, but it could either be sodium chloride or potassium chloride. Either of those is perfectly fine. Okay. That's right. So for our purposes, sodium and potassium are basically interchangeable. Neither is participating in the reaction anyway, so they're just spectators. So as long as you use that, uh, so they should both, both be fine. Okay. All right. 
right, so uh, our summary here is um, when there's water present, that provides an OH group for the second oxidation. Um, and uh, dichromate can only dissolve in water, so it always gives you the second oxidation. Whereas PCC, you can dissolve it in uh, some, you can dissolve it without water, so you can only do uh, so that would allow you to do only the one oxidation and get the aldehyde. And at this point in the course, we rarely want carboxylic acids. At this point in the course, we usually want aldehydes and ketones. Therefore, at this point in the course, if you're doing a problem on your own, you should almost always use PCC. If you're coming up with your reagents on your own, you should almost always use PCC because we usually want a uh, aldehyde um, or a uh, ketone. Um, but you should still you still need to know about this if the problem introduces it to go over the overoxidation uh, problem over there. All right. Um, one other thing to notice here: why were we able to oxidize this? Well, remember, um, in order to form a new bond to oxygen, you have to break one of the carbon's bonds, and what you break is a carbon-hydrogen bond. Well, we broke this carbon-hydrogen bond, right? So that's the same pattern we saw here. In order to oxidize the first time, we broke this carbon-hydrogen bond. And then in order to oxidize the second time, we broke this carbon-hydrogen bond. Any oxidation, you need to be able to break a uh, carbon-hydrogen bond. OK, good. That's a really good way to draw it. Okay, so we know we have chromium, that's an oxidizing agent. First we break this carbon-hydrogen bond to oxidize to here, but because we're in the presence of water, um, we're going to then oxidize again by breaking this carbon-hydrogen bond, and the water contributes to OH, um, and that gives us this carboxylic acid functional group down here. Um, if this would just predict the product, you could get full credit if you just drew this picture, but it's really better to go through this picture so that you really understand um, what you're doing here. Now, how about if we'd used PCC without water? Stop with the first yeah, PCC without water, we would stop here. And usually that's what you would, would have wanted. So this might have been a mistake on the part uh, of the student there. Um, now, there's something else that's important to see here. So let's go through uh, the steps here and decide uh, how many times this is going to oxidize. You probably can only oxidize once, right? And that's because? Because of uh, hydrogen. Oh, that wasn't too tricky. OK, that's right. Every time we oxidize, we have to break a carbon-hydrogen bond, but we only started with one carbon-hydrogen bond here. So here's the skeleton. Here's the alcohol carbon. Uh, we're going to break this carbon-hydrogen bond and oxidize it. Uh, what's the name of this functional group? Which one? Um, uh, that's a ketone. 
back here, we got an aldehyde. A ketone carbon is attached to two carbon chains, and aldehyde only has one carbon chain. We started here with the alcohol. These are names that are uh, good to know, or important to know. Okay, um, and now we're in the presence of water. So we have to worry about whether we're going to do a second oxidation, but as you figured out, there's no way to do a second oxidation because there's no more carbon-hydrogen bonds to break. There's no more carbon-hydrogen bonds to break um, over here. Um, so is this the intermediate or the final product? Final. Yeah, this is the final product in this case, even though we use the dichromate in water. So there's some complications here that make for some good test questions. You can't just memorize things in a simple way. You can't just say, oh, you can't just say these reagents always give you carboxylic acids. Oh, I, I erased what the, the answer was here, but our final product here was uh, 